Destiny, God gave me a dream for you. Uh, this is back in September-ish. It was just before the prayer meeting where the leaders couldn't meet and everybody just met out in the foyer. So there's two parts of the dream. The first half of the dream was uh, I went into Forerunners. I couldn't see the outside of the building, but I knew what it looked like. And it was just like a big Gothic old time cathedral. But when I went in it, it was remodeled and decked out wide open. And then it was just like beautiful wooden floors. At the far end, there was a little overhang and it went up a story and then there was an overhang. Uh, and the overhang where there was like offices. And the other end, there was like a terrace or a balconies going up. So it kind of had those wide sweeping stairs that you see in any castle princess movie. The big set of double wide sweeping stairs that opens wider at the end and gets narrow towards the top. That was like the stairway at the very bottom, then it went up about 15 feet to a kind of terrace floor level, and then that had stairs up to another balcony, and that had stairs that went up to another balcony. The bottom stairs were sweeping stairs, and then the other stairs were just normal stairs. And in the dream, I really looked at the railing, and it was very ornate, the kind that is like a wrought iron, black, and like curls around and has ornate designs in it. And it was white, white stairs, black railing. And it went up three stories, but each story is about 15 feet, so it really went up about five stories to the top. And the entire building was five to seven stories tall. Again, I couldn't see the outside of the building. I just knew it was like a Gothic cathedral, church cathedral. But the inside, it had been remodeled and it was very modern and trendy and beautiful. And in that place, there was a wind. And I knew, I just knew it was a Holy Spirit wind and it was a strong wind and it circulated around. And there were two winds. There was like a wind that circulated around the bottom and then there was wind that circulated underneath that overhang, but as it came out from under that, it would go up and would go all the way to the top of the building and then come all the way back down, all seven stories. It was utilizing that entire space. And on the bottom, I saw that there were box fans, big, huge box fans, like one on either side. So I'm just standing there looking around and I notice there's like little kids and they grab boats, what looks like boats, and they're climbing up this the trellis. Uh, to the top floor, putting the boat over the edge of the railing and riding that Holy Spirit wind down to the bottom. And I'm like, whoa, that's cool. I got to do that. So I grab a boat. It kind of looked like an inflatable raft, but it felt heavy like a wooden boat. And I brought it up to the top, stuck it over the edge, hopped in. There's a kid like going down right in front of me. And I just went down right behind him. I was like, that is awesome. So I did that once or twice. After the third time I went back to go again, I was like, you know, it's really hard to bring this boat back. This boat's heavy. Me personally, I can't be heavier than this boat. This boat has to be like as heavy as me. I'm able to sit in this boat and the wind is carrying me down. So why not just get rid of the boat? So that time I tried it. I just left the boat behind and I just went over the rail and it worked. And so then it was on. I did that a couple more times and then I realized that as I went, I rode the wind that I could, like somebody jumping out of an airplane, if I relaxed and kind of spread out, spread my arms out, I could actually slow myself down. Uh, and go back up on the wind. If I tensed and made myself more like a pencil, then I would drop faster. And so I began to realize, you know, I don't even have to climb back up these stairs. And so that's what I did. I went to the top and I went down and right before I'd hit the ground, I would relax and spread out and let the wind lift me. When I got to the part where there was that overhang and I had to go underneath, I would just go to where my tippy tip toes could hit the floor. And then I began to get, um, just have fun with it. And I would just like spin and do moves that were impossible for me to do. And it would look like I'm ice skating and I'm just floating across the floor. But really I'm riding that wind. And then when I got to the other side, out from under that overhang, I would relax my body totally, let the wind bring me all the way back up to the top and then do it again. And then I just looked around and noticed and I'm like, it just dawned on me, you know, these people can actually dance. You know, I can't dance. I'm me. I'm, I'm just having fun with it. These people are really dancers. And they can have like the most amazing dances ever. They can be utilizing this spirit, this flow, this wind. They can make crazy, insane, just amazing, fun dances. So I look around and I just see Destiny sitting in the corner playing with a kid. And I'm just like, Destiny, look at this wind. And I'm just like showing you what you can do. And to your credit, you just get up and immediately you ride the wind and you go up about 10 or 15 feet on it. But once you get up 10 or 15 feet, you kind of get scared. And so you come back down. And so you ride it a little bit more and you go up and come back down. But I noticed that when you're doing that, you're wearing roller skates and those roller skates weighed you down. Then the scene cuts. I'm still in that building. 
But now I'm standing uh, in a line and I'm standing in front of what looks like a lady. And she has like a motherly kind of homely appearance or aura, homely presentation about her. But when I look at her face, I see witchcraft. It's not like an ugly face or a scary face. Again, the face had an appearance of homeliness or motherliness, but just the appearance. When you look to the eyes, you see hardness and you see that witchcrafty um, devil kind of look where it's just a hard piercing eye. And she had no front teeth. And this is a little weird, but this is what I saw. She had like a 10 year old boy or an eight year old boy. And she was just holding him and hugging him and patting his back. And she had his head just pressed up into her chest like she was comforting him. And as she was comforting him, she would dip her head down, grab his hair, rip it out by the roots, a little chunk of it, and chew it and eat it. And then the boy would burst into tears. And she would cry, pat him, comfort him. And then she'd do the same thing. She'd bend down with her back teeth, grab another chunk of hair, rip it out, and eat it. And she did that while he just kind of watched. And there's other people standing around kind of watching it, not necessarily knowing what's going on, but just being there and observing and then when the lady's done she sends the boy away and he's sent away crying and as i looked at the little boy just this feeling came over me oh the little boy's crying but the emotion behind it was like it's the boy's fault and the blame and the shame went with the boy rather than with the one who was causing the pain and then i woke up and so yeah at first i was like what is that dream? <laughs> but the more I thought about it, God showed me both parts. And so the first part, I feel like it's just like a general overall word for forerunners to really tap into the full potential of what you guys have. The fact that it's in a church, the old Gothic church, but it's modernized on the inside. I just feel like God's saying that, you know, you guys have taken the foundations and you guys have it all. Like you've taken the old and the new and you've put them together which is what God wants. He wants unity back in his church. And so you've done that. And so there's a spirit in that place. There's Holy Spirit flowing through that place. But there's also two winds. There's a wind that's blowing horizontally, like in your horizontal relationships. And there's a wind that's blowing in your vertical relationships between heaven and earth. And the wind that's blowing vertically between heaven and earth is the Holy Spirit. But the wind that's being generated horizontally, still Holy Spirit, but it's being man-made. There's box fans helping to generate that wind. There was a subtle distinction also in that dream where some people were just staying in that lower wind and never going into the upper wind, staying in that self-generated wind. And so I'm not sure what my part or role in that dream was other than to just call out the potential that you guys have, that you can get out of the boat, you can ride the Holy Spirit, you can just be you and based on your posture, based on your worship, based on how relaxed and trusting you are, you can ride the Holy Spirit effortlessly and continually through that space. It's not one or the other. It's not Holy Spirit doing all the work. Because if Holy Spirit did all the work, I would get dropped off at the floor every time and have to run back up. But if I did part of the work, I was still limited to only where the Holy Spirit flowed. But I could ride it continuously and effortlessly, and I didn't have to do any of the physical, hard, manual labor. I could just relax and trust, and the Holy Spirit would lift me back up. I hope that made sense. So then the part where I turned to you, destiny sitting in the corner, and to your credit, as soon as I was like, hey, look at this, this is amazing, look what you can do, you just, you got up and boom, you rode the wind, and you rode it from the floor, you didn't climb up to the top and write it down, you didn't discover it the way I discovered it, you just got up and rode it. But two things, um, and maybe it was because you just rode it so fast that you were a little bit surprised that perhaps it worked. And so you went up 10 or 15 feet. And when you got up 10 or 15 feet, you got scared. And so I just want to speak into that, that don't let fear or distrust stop you from going high, the max potential of the Holy Spirit. Because 10 to 15 feet high is pretty cool. But you can go seven stories, way beyond that. And the other thing I noticed is you had roller skates on. And the roller skates helped you in that horizontal wind. It made things flow quickly and effortlessly. It got you to get a lot more work done, but you're still just going in circles and you're never going up. So two things about the roller skates was, one, the roller skates were helping you in the horizontal, but it was doing it in busyness. In the vertical, they're actually weighing you down. So the other thing I would pray into or consider is to really ask God to remove the busyness. And there might be some things or elements 
ways that you plan or structure your schedule or your day. That really helps you flow and move quickly and easily. But God's saying, get rid of those. And even if you go slower in the horizontal, it's going to allow you to go vertical um, and to utilize the entire space. So it's really bringing that supernatural down and into the natural and mixing the two together. The other part of the dream, admittedly, is a little weird. But I think it makes sense once God showed me. Uh, what he was showing me is the spirit behind forerunners that needs to be exposed and prayed into and removed. Or prayed that people begin to see it and realize it for what it is. That there's like a spirit of witchcraft. There's a witchcrafty spirit. But it's hiding itself as like a motherly, loving, affectionate, compassionate spirit. But really it's the same thing as a witchcraft spirit. And it's not really like using a motherly love. It's still using kind of a sensual love. Uh, it wasn't down on their level. The little kid was just being hugged into the woman, but she wasn't bending down to make sure it was okay. She was just hugging him and distracting him with his face in her chest. Because when she did that, she was able to reach down and she didn't have front teeth. So I feel like God's saying that. This spirit isn't like a biting spirit. It's a backbiting spirit. It's not like a spirit that just comes out and like attacks you or like a... Um, a super abrasive spirit it's more subtle it doesn't have like a bite to it but what it would do is reach down and just grab the kid's hair with her back teeth and rip it out and then chew it and swallow it then i feel like hair represents strength like samson it represents anointing like samson and so there's a spirit that's in forerunners that doesn't have a big bite and is slowly and surely and in little bites and bits and pieces it steals the anointing of the younger generation Meanwhile, it's pretending to comfort and protect them. And then when it sends them on their way, the shame and the blame goes with that generation and the shame and the blame goes with that person rather than on the real spirit that's causing the shame and the blame or the real spirit that's perpetrating the abuse. So anyways, I would just say that that is something needs to be prayed into that God can expose and remove that spirit. Okay, that's all I got. Let me say a quick prayer. Heavenly Papa, I just thank you for destiny. I thank you for forerunners. I thank you for the amazing things you are doing in their lives. I thank you for the amazing things you're doing through them and that your Holy Spirit is involved in it. And I just ask you for clarity and wisdom in everything they do, that you will just lose a fearlessness on destiny, a fearlessness on the team, a fearlessness on the kids, that this generation will be able to tap in and run with the way you want to move in forerunners not just horizontal, but between heaven and earth, that you will just remove the busyness from the lives of the leadership at Forerunners, that you'll just remove the skates so that they can go high, and you'll remove the fear, and I just lose a fearlessness in Jesus' name. And I just pray for wisdom and discernment and exposure of any spirits, any familiar spirits that are operating behind the scenes in foreigners to slow it down, to steal its anointing, to steal what you're trying to birth in it, to steal the energy and the life from the kids, and to shame and blame the wrong people. And we just lose your laughter, your joy, your shalom, your Holy Spirit to drive it out in Jesus' name. And we just thank you for the amazing, world-changing, culture-shaping, go-getting, trend-setting, atmosphere-shifting, life and power and love and energy and unity that you are bringing through forerunners and into this culture. A brand new way to do things. May forerunners be a place that the Holy Spirit can move freely through. In Jesus' name you rock. Amen. All right. One more thing came up as I was re-listening to this and doing the editing. The stories. Um, how it's five stories or seven stories. Five to seven stories tall. And I feel like there's a play on words in that. In that at the base level. Uh, that's the first story, and I feel like that's Beloved. Beloved's your first story, but I, I feel like there's five to seven more stories in you that are like Beloved, and each one is greater than Beloved, but it's going to depend on how high you can go in the spirit to be able to access and bring those stories down. You definitely have the second story in you, even if you change nothing, but um, it's going to take trust, and it's just going to take a fearlessness to go and access the remaining three to five stories that God's placed in your heart and giving you ability to access. So anyways, I don't know if that resonates with you at all, but I feel like every time I've listened to this on repeat, that has jumped out at me 